Hey guys, Shannon Coates here, back with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a CLI tool of Python. And the reason why you should build your CLI tool of Python, well, I'll give you three main reasons. One, quick and easy. You're going to see how easy it is just by watching this video. Two, uh, potentially your tools are going to be cross platform And then three, you get the full power of the Python programming language. Now, enough of the chit chat, let's just get into it. All right, so the CLI tool I'm going to make today is a Yoda translator. It's going to take a normal English sentence in and it's going to spit a Yoda's form of the sentence out. So essentially what I want to be able to do is do something like Yoda and then type some sort of sentence. So uh, we'll, we'll type the sentence, you should subscribe, right? And ideally what will happen is it will get us some sort of feedback and translate it uh, to, you know, how Yoda would speak. Um, now, of course, it just failed, and it's because I haven't actually written it yet. So now that we have the idea in mind and the form in which I want it to be, uh, we're going to hop right into it. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to cd into a directory, and I'm going to create it in a content directory, and we're going to make a directory, and I'm going to call this, um, so I'm going to call this directory Yoda. doesn't matter what this directory is called, per se, so I'm just going to transfer into Yoda. Now I'm going to make a few files. So I'm just going to make a setup.py file, right? It's going to be empty. Like if I list the directory now, you can see it's completely empty. Um, but we're also going to make a directory. Now this name does matter. You can name this whatever you want the module to be called. Uh, I'm going to name it translator just because um, it makes sense because this is going to be a translator. And so now we can see I made that directory. And now we're going to change it to the translator directory. And now we're going to change it to the translator directory. All right, now that we're in the translator directory, let's, now that we're in the translator directory, we need to create two more files. So I'm gonna touch a dunder main, and we're also gonna touch a init file. Now these are all the files we need, all right? So we're gonna tackle this one file at a time. So let's start with the main file. So in this main file, it's gonna do something really simple. We're just gonna create a couple methods that are gonna allow us to one, get input from the user, and two, send that input uh, to the API and get the response back, and then we're gonna re we're just gonna print out that response. That's all that this main file is gonna do, and then our CLI tool is gonna allow us to call this method uh, later. So let's start. So I'm just gonna do some import requests. Um, so request is how we're actually gonna be able to make the get calls to the API, and we're also gonna import sys. Sys is how we're gonna get the input from the user. So I'm gonna create two methods. Um, the first method is just gonna be a little bit of a helper method. So I'm gonna call it read input, and it's literally just gonna read the input uh, from the user. So if we do, um, so I'm gonna create a variable here, just text and for word in, uh, can't type today, for word in sys.argv, from one to whatever. So the reason why I'm doing, so sys.argv, it's a list that contains the elements that a user passes when they um, call your Python script from the command line. Um, position zero is the actual name of the script. One and onward are all the parameters you pass. So I'm just going to um, use this. There are much better ways of getting the arguments, but for now, this is all you need to know. Um, Cause again, this is the real simple quick example. And then we're just gonna plus equals text with a format string and our and our format string is just gonna have our word in here, right? And that's it. Oh, that's supposed to be a bracket. All right, and then simple enough and we'll return, ret I swear I can't type today, and we'll just return text, right? All right? Now we're gonna create our second function. Our second function is going to actually do the translation. So it's gonna send a request to the API and get us back the response, all right? So I'm just gonna do this really quickly, so. Um, def, we'll call it translate, and um, it won't take any parameter. We'll come in here and we'll just do text is equal to read, text is equal to read input, and then um, um, we'll just put one catch in here. I'm just going to do one little catch. So all this is going to do is if we don't enter any text, um, it's just gonna return. It's not gonna try to call the API. You don't wanna call the API unless you need to. So now I'm gonna use requests. Um, so if you don't know what request is, you, you, can, you can look up the docs for requests, but I'm just gonna make a simple get request to this API. 
And the API that I'm going to use today, it will be linked down in the description below, so don't worry. So if you want to go look at it or any of the other options that they have available, please do go check it out. So now this is important. So the text we input is gonna go right here inside this. So this should have been a format string. All right, so now we're gonna come in here. And so the API is gonna return a few things to us. And so it's gonna return two things. It's gonna return an original text. And we're gonna get that response from the rest.json. And now we're gonna access the contents um, attribute and the text. And this is just how that API returns. And finally, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna print out a formatted string and this format string is just going to have our original text and our translated text on a new line. All right, so really quickly, let me go over everything that I just wrote. So this first method is just going to read the input from the user um, that was passed as an argument. And then it's the second function is going to be translate and this is going to be called, this is what interacts with the actual API. So it's going to make one get request using the text that we, um, using the text that we input and it's going to return both it's going to return response and from that response we're going to see the original text that we sent and we're also going to see the translated text and then it's just going to print it out down here in this final line okay so first things first we want to test to make sure that this actually works right so let's do if name equals equals main and we're going to use the if name equals main to run our code really quickly so let's just put our translate function in here Translate. All right, and now we can just save this file. So ideally, um, what I have here is I have a second terminal split open, so now we're gonna run it. So I'm gonna do Python 3.8, uh, and I'm gonna run mine. Now I do have requests installed. If you don't have requests installed already, it will error for you, but um, I have requests installed, so it should run just fine. So we're gonna do main, and we're gonna see our response. And I'm gonna give it some sort of text. So I'm gonna say, um, you should go to bed and we're going to pin enter and here we go. This is exactly what we were expecting. So the original is you should go to bed period, but the translated version is to bed. You should go, which is exactly what we do expect you to say. All right. So now that we've finished our Dunder main, let's go into our Dunder init uh, file that we made earlier and let's edit it. So. Our init folder, so the reason why this file exists is you have to have it for Python modules to work. So we're actually gonna put some metadata in it that we're gonna use later in our setup file. So you can put a wide variety of um, actual content and stuff in here, but you can put a wide variety of, the, the, there are a lot of different things you can put in your init file, um, but for this real simple example, we are just gonna put a couple things. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a Dunder version and we're gonna use this as our version number. Um, the version number really doesn't matter. I'm gonna call it 1.0 because this is the first version of this CLI tool that we're making. And then we're also gonna do a Dunder uh, dependencies. Now this is important. Um, the dependencies is gonna be a list and it's going to be a list of, and it's gonna be a list of modules of Python modules that we are going to require. Remember earlier I mentioned that I'm using request to do the API request? Well, um, we have to specify that here so that way when our CLI tool gets installed on a system using Python setup tools, it also will install requests if it's not already there. All right, so we're going to just type requests because that's the name of the module we want. And this is all we should need from here. Now, like I said, you can add more stuff, but we don't need to right now for this sample. All right, so now we're gonna go back a directory and we're going to come back to uh, the, the root directory of Yoda and we're going to now edit our setup file. Now setup files can be pretty complex, but we're gonna keep it fairly simple. So we're gonna do from setup tools, import setup, right? And then we're gonna do import trans, tra translator, I cannot type today. All right, so now this is really important. Whatever that name is, that has to match the folder that you put the init and the main in. So um, right here, if I cd back directory, 
you see that it's called translator that has to match there because we're telling Python to look in this uh, folder in this module folder. All right, so now let's come into our setup file. We're just going to do setup. All right, so now let's come down here. Let's do setup. And this is where we're actually going to define some of the variables that setup needs us to have. So one of the things that we're going to define is the version. Remember, and version, and remember, we, we specified this in translator. Translator dot version. See, this is why we put that metadata in there, because then we only have to change it in one place in the future in that one file, right? So now translator version. Um, so it's going to get that version number. We're also going to have to do packages, packages, and we're going to say this has to be a list and this list has to include the name of any and all folders you want to include. So we only want to include one folder, the translator folder. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is the entry points. All right. So now this part is really important. This is going to be what we want to call our CLI tool. So. I'm going to call mine Yoda. You can name it whatever you want to for your application, but I'm going to name it Yoda. So when Python creates the executable version of the CLI tool you're making, this is what it will name um, it. So I'm going to name it Yoda. And then you have to tell it which method it's going to call. So we're going to call from the translator package in the main file. We are going to call the translate um, method. So we don't, you don't need any parentheses or anything like that. So this is exactly. So like if you had, you know, named your function something else or set up your files differently, um, you would have to, you would have to change this up a little bit. All right. So now we are officially done inside of entry points. So now we have one more thing to do, and the last thing we have to do is our um, the install requires. So install requires. So this is also that list, but we already created install requires. This is also that list, but remember we created this list earlier. So we have to use import it from our translator. And so now we are all done. We have now set up all the files that we need. So now we're going to actually install it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to do Python minus n pip, uh, whichever your Python version is. And then I'm going to do install and dot. That's going to tell it install from this relative directory. So it's going to try to install this module. If we did everything right, it should work. Fingers crossed. All right, it installed. So now that we know our module got installed correctly, let's make sure that we can see that CLI tool. So let's do Yoda, and I'm gonna do autocomplete. And yeah, so see my file is here. So now if I just do it, of course, I didn't put any text, that's so gonna error, right? Um, but now if I do Yoda and do some sort of text, I'm gonna say, um, you sh should like this video. Oh, that's weird. It just says you should like this video. You should like this video. I guess Yoda doesn't have anything to say about that. Well, we didn't need Yoda to translate the fact that I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, but you should subscribe to my YouTube channel and you should like this video because now you can build any sort of CLI tool in Python. The possibilities are endless. Again, my code will be down in the description and I guess I'll catch you next video. Until then, see ya.